Hi, everybody. So today I'm going to make a quick video reviewing ChatDoc. ChatDoc is one of the interfaces for ChatGPT, and it allows you to upload a PDF, a single document, and then chat with that document. So I'll show you that right now. Uh, so here is um, chat doc uh, chat doc is available at chatdoc.com right there um, it's very simple you can just click right away and get started um, and then you can I've already signed in and so you can just drag and drop you can just click and upload a document from your file system I've already preloaded a document a document that I wrote myself it's a chapter um, in a collection um, which uh, one of my colleagues, uh, or two of my colleagues have helped edit uh, called Introduction to Criminology, and I wrote a chapter on race and racism. So it's here, and I'll put it in the, um, in the description later if people want to look at it. But I thought I would use something like this because um, it's uh, an open educational resource, so it's something that any, anyone can access. And, um, you know, it's my own writing, so I don't feel like I'm I'm doing anything, <laughs> doing anything wrong. Um, and also, I think that's part of the test. Um, I'm going to actually ask it questions, right? I've uh, already preloaded it over here, and I've already preloaded some uh, questions, which I'll go over with you in a second. Um, but, uh, but just to show you, ChatDoc is very similar to two other things that I've reviewed already. One is called Humata. Um, which is also another a interface for ChatGPT, which allows you to chat specifically with one document, which is also very similar with this other program called ChatPDF, which also allows you to upload a single PDF document and then chat just with that. So all three of these programs, the one that I'll show you in a second, which is ChatDoc, Humata, and also ChatPDF, all three of these programs allow you to keep the chat in one lane. You're only chatting specifically with the document that you've uploaded, but with the power leveraging the large language model that's available through OpenAI. Okay, so let's go to chat doc. So I've uploaded this document already. How many pages is it? I think it's 15 pages long here. Um, and uh, what it shows is the document that you uploaded. It's quite dynamic here in the sense that you can make it bigger or smaller. Um, and so I'll actually make it smaller because we, we don't have to read it actually. What we're interested in is the questions on the right. And then on the right hand side here, you can answer, you can on the bottom here, uh, enter your questions. I've already preloaded some questions, which we can go over just so that it's quicker in case um, sometimes the system is a bit slow. Um, so I've just preloaded some questions. So I just simply asked right off the top, the very simple question, what's the main argument? What's the main argument of this document that I uploaded? Uh, quote, the main argument of the document is that racism is a systemic issue that is deeply ingrained in institutions such as border control, police, and correctional facilities, and disproportionately impact indigenous, black, and people of color. The document explores the historical roots of race and racialization and how colonialism led to the subjugation of indigenous populations and the establishment of racist structures. The document also highlights the different forms of racism, including overt racism, institutional racism, and systemic racism, and how they are applied in real social practice. The document concludes by emphasizing the importance of understanding institutional racism and its impact on minoritized communities to challenge and reform systems to ensure equitable treatment. I think that's a fair uh, summary of what I've written. I wouldn't use a all of those exact words. I, I'm not so sure if the last sentence, I'm not so sure if I do say that um, we should reform the system to ensure equitable treatment. I mean, certainly that the issue of social justice and if you will, um, uh, justice in general or fairness in general is I think throughout the document. And that is true. Uh, but anyways, I'm not so sure of the tone of that sentence. But otherwise I think I do argue about racism as a systemic problem. I do talk about indigenous uh, issues and, and black and people of color. Uh, I do talk about the historical roots of race and racialization. I talk about 
colonialism. And absolutely, I do um, outline these three key issues about overt racism, institutional racism, and, um, and systemic racism. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so that's good. And how does it get this, if you will, summary? It actually tells us, right? It tells us, I looked at page three, I looked at page four, and it, it's highlighting them in blue on the left. I looked at page five, six, eight, 10, <laughs> 11, 13, and 14. So it's look at all those sections of my writing to pr produce just these one, two, three, these four sentences, which is not a bad paragraph. I think that's good writing, actually. Some of the, of course, some of the diction I wouldn't use, but uh, but that's that's the, if you will, the proclivities of this large language model and how it speaks. Okay, so I'm very interested in how it explains overt racism, institutional racism, and systemic racism. Racism. So I ask, explain these three things. And it says, it begins by saying, overt racism refers to racism that is experienced as direct interpersonal experiences. Is it a type? It is a type of racial bias that individuals experience subjectively. For example, if someone is racist towards you, you experience it as a direct insult. Overt racism can also refer to racist speech or actions that are motivated by racial bias or hate. That is very much verbatim, and actually, it tells you. I think it, it gets it from this uh, page. Yeah, there, page ten. So that's actually the section called "What is overt racism?" on the left, and that's actually some of this specific wording. So it's interesting. It's it's kind of paraphrasing what I'm writing in this text in this open educational resource, but it's not quoting it in the sense it's not putting quotation marks. Uh, but it is saying where it is getting, if you will, this paraphrasing. But the paraphrasing is not paraphrasing. You know, uh, this um, this um, sentence overt racism refers to racism that is experienced as direct interpersonal experiences. I think that is a, a, a direct sentence. So in terms of the academy, we would have quoted that, but here in the case of chat doc, it doesn't quote it. And maybe it's not able to, I'm not sure. Maybe the large language model, the transformer is unable to do that. But in terms of the information, in terms of the content, I would say it's quite good and it's quite accurate um, and it's uh, right on point, I think. So what's the second one? Institutional racism is racism that's embedded in a system or institution. It encompasses policies or practices that disproportionately impact people of color, even if the people enforcing these policies are not necessarily racist themselves. An example of institutional racism is a rule prohibiting non-white patrons from sitting downstairs in a cinema. Okay, so now that is, is very much paraphrasing. I don't hear much of my own, if you will, words in that sentence. So that's unlike the first paragraph, um, not, if you will, um, citing, I mean, uh, borrowing words without citing them in, in quotations. Um, and I think that, again, is probably coming from page, uh, uh, yeah, institutional rise from page 12. Okay, so I think, you know, I won't, I won't read the third one. I'm sure it's, it's, um, it's quite good, systemic racism. Yeah, yes, that's accurate. So then there's a word here where they say this word direct to insult. So I'm just trying to actually push it a bit. So I'm saying, so what is meant by direct insult? Direct insult refers to a form of overt racism experienced as interpersonal encounter where an individual is subjected to racial bias directly. It can include verbal ins insults that mock the individual's racial background actions taken against the individual because of the race or any other form of direct personal insult attributed to the race. As such, it involves immediate emotional subjective effects felt by the individual who is subjected to it. I don't really say it like that, but much of what my phrasing that I use in the article is, I think, reflected in this. And if I were to ask, does this represent my argument? Yes, it's just framed differently, but it is still a very, very good summary, I, I would say. What is, embed, what is meant by embedded in a system? And then I think it, it, I've read this already and I think it's not a bad explanation of that embed, embeddedness. And then this is the hardest part. I think this notion of systemic racism, it, it is also even a concept that's, uh, if, if you will, much used, but um, much uh, misunderstood. And so it writes, systemic racism, quote, systemic racism is a form of racism that is different from overt and institutional racism. It is a bias or difference experienced as an effect of social structures and may not be immediately recognized as racism, end quote. 
That's very good. I do say that. And I think um, it's, I feel like it almost understands what I'm saying, right? It can also be understood as how race intersects with economic achievement and labor market disparity, so on and so forth. Yeah. So I think, I I guess, <laughs> I feel like, I, I feel that it, it it is getting what I'm saying. I think maybe because I'm he, hearing some of what, you know, my words that I've used echoed back in the answer. So it's, I guess it's maybe flattering. Um, and so, uh, so maybe I'm being uh, duped into thinking that it's a good answer, but no, I, I think it is a good answer. Um, and then I asked why do black students do worse? Because uh, in the, in the text, I cite some stats suggesting that black students, uh, um, the academic outcomes for some black students are not so good. Then I ask it to pr provide an outline, which is it's able to. But what is interesting, there's an example of my colleague, Shireen Hassan, who um, who tells a story about her um, uh, her experience at the border. Um, but then in this answer here, it mistakens her because that, if you will, kind of story is front loaded at the beginning of the chapter. It mistakens her as the author of the text. So it gets that confused. Um, and then I mention here, I say Hassan is mentioned in the article, but she's not the author of the text. Her story is mentioned in the analysis of race. And then it's so funny. It says, yes, that is correct. Shereen Hassan's story is used as an example in the article to illustrate the systemic nature of race. Um, and then I ask it to present an overview in bullet form. So bullet form, and it's able to do that. Um, and uh, I ask, what are some key historical examples used in it? And it talks a bit about some of the examples that I use. I ask it to rewrite this answer because it, it talks a little bit about the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. And as I want actually a bit more, so I say, please rewrite longer. It's not able. It says, well, what do you mean a longer? I'm, I'm not, I don't understand. So then I just change my, my I attack differently, but I ask a different question. What are some historical examples? And provide longer explanation and it does do so and i think here is an excellent if you will kind of step-by-step -step itemized uh kind of breakdown of the longer article it has a, a, a short um introduction here talking about how it's going to use these historical examples it talks about colonialism it talks about residential schools it talks about the legal system um and then it has a nice if you will conclusion re-summarizing the three things i've mentioned so i'll stop sharing uh and i'll just come back to the top here yeah so i do think chat doc is very good in terms of its ability to uh answer your questions you can really ask it anything as i've asked you know i keep asking about this document that i wrote and when i read the answer since i'm the original author I do think these are very, very strong answers. And uh, except for the small mistake that it made about uh, Hassan, um, which I think, yeah, I, I guess we can forgive it for that mistake. Um, but I do think it's a very, very good um, program in terms of helping you interact with what I've written. So one can even argue, I, I think like when I'm reading this, I do <laughs> almost feel like and if I kept asking more and more questions, I do feel like I'm having a conversation with myself, right? In the sense that I can recognize what I've written and I could keep asking it, can you clarify this? Can you give me an example of that? And it would give, if you will, uh, back to me what I've written in the document. So that I think is proof to me that um, it does stay in the lane. It's not looking outside of the document, right? It's not going into the large uh, sort of uh, uh, training database that it was exposed to um, before um, uh, ChatGPT 3.5 or 4. I think this is actually uh, point f uh, 0.4 because this is an API that is, of course, um, as a as a um, standalone product attached to um, OpenAI. So I, I do think that this is um, GPT-4. I'm not sure, I can't be certain but I suspect it is. So um, I think the quality of the writing is excellent. Um, it's not fabricating anything. It's not as some people like to use the word hallucinate. I, I prefer fabricate or confabulate. Um, it's not fabricating anything. It's not making things up. It's not lying. Um, and so I think it's very good. Do I think it's equal to Humata or chat PDF? I think they're all similar in the sense 
of their ability to uh, answer questions about a specific document. I think Humata and ChatDoc, this program itself, they're both very good in the sense that they show you where they're getting the information from, which is a kind of a quasi citation. It's not really citation. Um, I thought that um, I thought that Humata might be a little bit better in terms of its voice, but I could be mistaken because I, I was looking at different documents at that time. Anyways, at any rate, I'll keep this short. I think they're both excellent programs for a researcher uh, or for a student, whether undergraduate or graduate, uh, because it does allow you to read something without reading it. It does allow you to interact with the document in a way that is not traditional. It's not a traditional form of read, reading based and reading and taking note based knowledge, but rather it's through this format of chatting, of questioning, of Q&A. I mean, in that sense, it is very Socratic, right? In the sense that you're asking a question, it, it answers, it doesn't, it doesn't really ask you a question back, but I think you can uh, feel like you're having a conversation uh, with, if you will, the guiding mind of the article. So I do like it. So um, I would say thumbs up for this program and Humata and also with chat VTF. Um, one of the other programs that is available online, but which I haven't um, uh, which I haven't used is uh, file chat, which is also a similar product and maybe I will review that on another day. Okay, so I hope you um, got something out of that. Thanks very much. Bye bye.